particular subject that I don't really want to do. But this day and age, it has to be done. Now, let me remind you that all sin is sin. Regardless of degree, it's a sin. There's no greater sins and there's no lower sins. There's no white lies, there's no polka dotted lies. I think when preachers and Christians uh, uh, express some sins, I think they're only trying to hide their own sins. When you elevate one sin above another, you're sinning because all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. We have all failed God. My sins are not as your sins, and your sins are not as my sins. But there's one thing about sin is we have violated what God in His Word has told us to do. And one thing about sin is we need to repent. And we need to seriously repent, and we need to fight them sins, and try to get victory over those sins, and seek God in those sins. And what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at sins of sodomy, homosexuality, lesbianism. And, and it's a great sin that is a sin against God, but it's not the greatest sin. It's a vile and wicked sin, and yet, you know, where is pride being preached out of pulpits today when you got a preacher who's full of pride himself? Where are lies being taught out of a pulpit when Christians are lying to each other? So we're going to look at the scriptures. And let you let remind you, as you turn to Genesis 13, 10. I've had a couple times, not many, not much. I've had a person or people come up to me in the public ministry. And the same form of the question is, and it's different ways worded, but you know, I'm gay, what does God think about it, or what does God think about the homosexuals? I take and say, yeah, that's a sin. But have you ever lied? Have you ever stole anything? Because though you're not going to find the sin of sodomy in the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments breaks down to everybody as a sinner. All have lied, all have, have uh, not spoken the truth, all have taken something that's not theirs. Now you may have to go back to your, your childhood to realize it was a cookie or a candy that, that you were not allowed to take or you did not ask permission, but you have stolen something in your time. And if not, how would you do with your parents when the Bible says, honor thy mother and father, and Paul backs it up in his writings to the churches, honor thy mother and father. And I know what they want, well, many, not all. Many will want me to do that question, what God thinks about homosexuals. They want me to answer them so they'll get angry at God and get angry at me and think I'm, you know, prejudiced and I have no feelings, I have no love. And I'm going to treat them as a sinner as I would do somebody come up to me who's sinning from the Catholic Church or any religion. All right, you're professing that sin. Let's look at three sins that we all do. Honor the mother and father, lying, and stealing. And we can go to the first commandment, you know, God first all the time, every time, and we all fail that one. And we'll get to, if you want to, we'll, later on. As, so you're going to present the gospel to them, you're going to present them as a sinner, that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And there are churches and Christians out there, though the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world, he won't take away sodomy. And I have seen postings of street preachers with sod sodomites and, and lesbians and queers are going to hell. Not if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. So let's look at this sexual sin. In Genesis 13, 10, And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord has Eden, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest to Zohar. So, in the beginning foundation that we find of the Bible, we find that it was a beautiful place. It was a nice place. It was compared to, what do you call it? 
It was compared to Edom. And you'll find Sodom and Gomorrah in first place in Genesis 10, 19. We're not going to go there, but that's the first place you find it. So, and we find a man named Lot. We know about Lot. When you read the scriptures in, in the New Testament, you find that Lot was just. He's right with God. He would be a Christian today that is saved and going the way of the world. With someone like cousin or uncle Abraham praying for him. Now let's look at 3, 13, 13. 13 in the Bible being a rebellion. Here's a rebellious verse, 13, 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Okay, Sodom had a trouble. It looked good. It looked fine. It was wonderful. But the population, the men, the Bible says, sinners, wicked, wicked and sinners. So wicked is not sinners, a sinner, it, it, there's an elevation before the Lord exceedingly. So the classification in the eyes of God about Sodom, wicked and sinners. That's not good. 1820. 1820. And we're going to get some things with this study here that you want me to speak about the great sex. Christians have a hang up to sex in the Bible. And we're going to go away from sex. 1820. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Alright, let's step away from Sodom for a moment and let's look at countries in the world to God there's a cry from Iran there's a cry from Zambia there's a cry from Germany Mexico is crying out Russia is crying out to God and there are nations that the cry is great and the cry is because of sin. And the sin can be very grievous. I guarantee Germany cried out to God during World War II. God, your people are being slaughtered by the millions. By the race of people that are inhabitants of our country. And God put an end to it. There are nations like America crying out to God. God! We won't allow you and Jesus in the Bible in the school. But evolution. I didn't say anything about sodomy. How about the rebellion against God and Jesus Christ and the word of God and the creation of God that is a sin that this country cries out to God. We reject you and your Bible, God. Oh, we want you to preach about the sound of it. Let's preach about the sins of America. Because when you reject the word of God, your country is only going to get worse. If you don't believe so, look at England, where 1611, our King James Bible came from. They rejected that for one of the standard versions. I forget which one. I don't care. And look at the rough house that nation is. Germany, in the realm of the Reformation, had a Bible, had a man... In in, doc, in Catholic doctrine, but still preaching salvation. And look where that country's going. America on the shores of the Geneva Bible coming to, to what was would be Massachusetts and then setting up from persecution of England, persecuting Christians themselves. Without sodomy. Nineteen four. 19.4 But behold, they laid down. Lot has entertained the angels. Invite them into their house. He has cooked a meal for them. And the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, remember we read they were wicked and sinners exceedingly, compressed the house round, both old and young, all ages, 
all the people from every quarter, young and old and rich and very poor. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men, the angels, which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. No, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and they produced children. That would be the, the word that used today is called sex. Sex is never the, the instrument of a husband and wife. Sex is male, female. The Bible says it's called knowing. And the men of Sodom who were wickedly sinners banged down this house because they want those two fresh males that came in. As you would see prisons today, they call them fresh meat. And they want to have sexual gratification and sex, sexual fornication and adultery and uh, sodomy. I got you Christians awake. Here it is. It's in the Bible. And we're looking at men who want to do things with other men that God has never prescribed for man to do. And we'll look at that later. And they're wicked cities, sinners above all. And you've got to the point, yeah, because they want to have sodomy relations, because they're homosexuals, yeah, God destroy them. Okay, yeah. Where we are right now, they are in sexual sins. Men are doing that which men are not supposed to be doing. And probably the women are doing it too. So, we'll, we'll look at it. We'll, yeah, there it is, right there. So, verse 24, 1924. And the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And Baptists say, yeah, give it to them, God. Judge them. Blow them up. We just had some earthquakes in California recently. And I've seen Christians post, yeah, God, drop it in More earthquakes. You're a fool. You're absolutely a fool. Because if God were to judge the Sodomites of the land, he would be also judging Christians in the land. Because Lot was in the land. I know the angels took Lot out. But, I mean, you want to cry destruction. God's not going to send two angels into every city of America and pull the Christians out. That's not going to happen. Any destruction upon sin is going to be cast upon those that are saved also. Sin violates everybody. But yeah, the men of Sodom are, are, are wicked and they're sinners, exceeding the city, and they cries up to God, and these men are wicked, they're involved in a sexual sin, and God just rains upon them fire and brimstone. Yay! Verse 28. And he looked toward Sodom, this is Abraham, and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of the furnace. The city's burnt, the city's gone, and they can only find fragments and, and, and remnants, and they find sulfur, and they find that the city has just been, has been penetrated with the wrath of God. The city is smoking and burning. So are the people burning in hell, and the fire and the flames of, of Sodom and Gomorrah has gone out. It, it's not smothering today. There's no smoke coming out of that city today from Genesis. 19, and yet the inhabitants of the land that sinned against God are in hell today. Except for Lot. God judges sin, and if you want to stay in your sin, you're going to pay the penalty. The wages of sin is death. Be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. But we've got so much more scripture. 1 Kings 14. 1 Kings 14. 1 Kings 14. Verse 24. 1 Kings 14, 24. And there were also Sodomites in the land, land of Israel, God's land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. 
There's the first time Sodom might show up in the Bible if you want to know. Right there. And they're in the land of God. They're in the land of Israel. The promised land. The land of milk and honey. There's the Sodomite. And look at the word abomination. Now to some Baptist people, that's the only abomination ever. So is wickedness. So is pride. So is idolatry. When you got your favorite sports team, you got your favorite movie, you got your favorite something that's not God, that's idolatry, that's a sin. So is witchcraft and, and, and magician, where you got these movies and you got the, this this kingdom that down south in Florida and California, everybody just wants to go see these rats. Just by having a name, magic is an abomination. And so are these people that go running around and call themselves Christian magicians. That's an abomination. You know what Saul told, I mean, you know what God told David about Saul? His sin was going to see a rich dressed up, you know, in a costume, seeking tricks and treats like he would do on a Halloween night. And then he rebelled against the word of God. Remember what I said before? America, no Bible, no God, no Jesus. Rebelling against the word. The main foundation that we have of sodomy is an abomination of God. Because the Bible says a man is to be with a woman, a male and a female. And the classification is you rebelled against God and his word. Adam and Eve did not sin by sodomy, but they sinned against the word of God. God said, do not eat of that fruit. And they ate the fruit, disobeying God as much as I were to tell a lie. God says, you're to be honest. You're to be, you know, make sure that your, your conduct and your life is true, not false. The Bible says you're to love and honor your mother and father. And if you don't, it's a sin. And if you don't, you rebel against what God has said. 2246. First Kings 22, 46. Let's get the main foundation of all sin. You have rebelled against the word of God. You say a cuss word. You, the Bible says we are not to have filthy communications. God said not to. You did it. You rebelled against the word of God. You have looked upon a woman to lust after. Jesus said, don't do that. You have sinned going against what Jesus has said. The Bible says, no, that, I'm not going to quote, but we are to control our thoughts and give them over to Jesus. And when our thoughts run away, we have violated the scripture. So let's look at sin as violating the scripture. So when somebody comes up to me, what about being gay? Or, you know, what God think about homosexuality? All right, let's look at sin. Let's name three sins. Have you lied? Have you stolen? Have you dishonored your parents? Let's, let's break it down to, let's break it down to sins that everybody, not everybody's done sodomy. Not everybody's a homosexual. But everybody's lied. Everybody is not told the truth. Everybody is taking something that's not there. I mean, there, there used to be at the banks a pen chained to the counter. You know why they put that pen chained to the counter? Because they knew I'd be coming in. And I'd be a person, I would take your pen and it would go in my pocket and would go home. And I'd lay it down in my bureau at night and say, wow, where'd I get that pen from? And the Bible says that's stealing. And it's a sin. The Bible says, somebody goes, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. And you're not. You just lied. That's a sin. But 1 Kings 22, I like to look at sin and not name sin. And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. Okay, so don't have the Sodomites. The Bible says get rid of the Sodomites. America has sinned against God. England has sinned against God that they allow them to do what they do in our country the sin is we won't get rid of them but we will promote their sin so when we have a country that promotes 
and we're looking at homosexuality. We're looking at, you know, sodomy and all that. So we'll stick with the subject. When we look at a country that's promoting that, not only the people that are involved in the sin have sinned against God, the nation that promotes it has sinned against God. And when God says you're not to do adultery and Hollywood is full of adultery, when the people that allow it, the movie theaters and the people that make money off it, the people that make the popcorn money and the people that go and all that, you are also involved with the sin. And we can't say, oh, Hollywood, they're just wild, wicked, so are Christians that go. We have partaken of the sin. And when you do not tell a person and sodomite, homosexuality, lesbian, whatever they call them, gay, whatever they call themselves, you are just as guilty today if you do not tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ and how they can get out of their sin by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and putting their sins under the blood of Jesus Christ and seeking God for help alone. Just as much as somebody involved in alcoholism or involved in drugs, drug activity, or whatever it be, the same Jesus is able to save all with sin. So how are you doing? Have you witnessed? Have you? I have. And I don't know. They asked me the question. I'm going to assume that they may they know somebody or they are. I don't know. But I do believe I have dealt with people who are above our subject, sodomy, homosexuality, whatever it be, and I have told them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have not condemned them. I have not fired them down. I have not shot them down you know, with my mouth in the scriptures. I have, hey, listen, we're all sinners. We all need to repent. Even as a saved, born-again, Bible-believing Christian, let me tell you, I sin. And I can find my sins in the Bible just like you can find your sins in the Bible. There are sins you don't know about me. They're in the Bible. But... Lying, stealing, and not not honoring your parents can definitely be found in the scriptures. If our nation wants to get right with God, we got to get them out of the land. They're not. They want the Bible, they want Jesus, and they want God, and they want Christians out of the land. They're not going to get right. This nation ain't going to get right. There will be no revival. There will be. None. At all. You don't like to hear that. 2 Kings 23 7. 2 Kings 23 7. I'm just going to go with scriptures. You come upon a man who's in, or a woman who's involved in these sins right now, sit them down if you can. They got the time, not give them a gospel track. But if you can sit them down and say, listen, all right, that's a sin. And they want you to say, because preachers and Christians and Baptist churches, have, oh, the great sin I am doing. Oh. Have you ever told a lie? Oh, yeah, so have I. Have you ever disrespect your parents? Well, yeah, so have I. Have you ever taken something that was not yours? So have you. So have I. And I got saved. I'm washing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm cleansed. I'm going to heaven. Well, what about this sin? It's a sin just like lying, stealing, and disarming your parents. Have you ever put God first all the time, every time? No. I'm sorry. I don't even do that. I'm a sinner. And if you can relate to them as, hey, I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. There's no big sins. There's no little sins. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You might be able to get them to think about it. Elevate in their heart what the gospel is. And maybe, you know what? That guy who witnessed to me wasn't a jerk. But he was sincere and actually loves me. That he's told me the truth. And when you tell them half the story, God's going to send you down to hell for your sins. You only tell them the half the truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Even if you're involved in a vile sin. But all the sin is sin. Oh, what did I say? 2 Kings 23, 7. And he broke down the houses of the Sodomites. 
that were by the house of the Lord. Oh, look at that. Churches are involved with this gay homosexuality movement. So were they in 2 Kings 23. Here's the Lord's house, the temple in Israel, and right by the house of the temple of God, built by Solomon, there are sodomite houses, homosexual houses, gay houses. Right there. Today, in 2019, they just bring it in the church. They bring the sin. It's a sin. It is not a big sin. It's not a little. It's a sin. Homosexuality and Sodomy and lesbian is a sin, and they brought it in, but that's nothing new under the sun. It's going on in Second Corinthians, uh, Second Chronicles, Second Kings twenty-three seven, where the women wove hangings for the grove. They had a grove. They made their own little temple, tabernacle. They made their own church. Remember Moses, the tabernacle was with with hangings. Here it is. We have gone from, from a city of Sodomites. They have come into the land of God. And have settled down. And the king has got rid of them. And we come to the point now. Here they are around the temple. In the land of God. In Jerusalem. And they're making their own church buildings. Like they're doing today. There's nothing new under the sun. Jeremiah 23, 14. Jeremiah 23, 14. They are a sinner as I am a sinner. I'm a saved sinner going to heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, and was buried and arose again the third day. That's how I'm saved. They are going to hell because they have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They have rejected Jesus Christ. And they may reject Jesus Christ because of an idiot who preaches the Bible with fire against them. That won't bring a Bible to them and show them we're all sinners. And if you were to witness one with the Bible, with an open Bible, and get them to realize they have sinned. And not before man, and not before a Baptist, but before God they have sinned, you can acknowledge to them, and they can acknowledge back, hey, you know what, I've done wrong. There have been people, homosexuals, lesbians, and sodomites that have been saved and have turned to do right. And they're not going to hell. The way I hear some of these people, some, I, I turn them off on Facebook, and think, even if they did get saved, they get a little burning in purgatory hell because of their sin. You're a fool. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It's sin, sin, sin. All have sinned. There's no degrees of sin. You got to get that. Jeremiah 23, 14. I have seen also the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery. These are the prophets. Both prophets. Walking in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. That none doeth return from his wickedness. They won't repent. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants of Gomorrah. God says, I will liken the false prophets, the false teachers, the false preachers, the false television evangelists, the false radio preacher, the false guy that gets in the pulpits today. I will relate them to Sodom and Gomorrah by what thing? They are doing adultery. They are lying. They strengthen the, the hands of those who are doing evil. And people in their authority, people in their seating, people who are before them, their followers are not repenting. And we are in the church age today that don't preach repent. God will accept you as you are. All are welcome here. You are likened to Sodom and you are likened to God, uh, Gomorrah. That's Bible. You see, they came into the to the land of Israel, and they were taken out. They came into where God's temple is and surrounded in Jerusalem. 
And now God says, listen, the churches are getting bad. The prophets are getting bad. The preachers are getting bad. My people are getting bad. And I'm going to like them to the men of Sodom that did wickedly and are sinners and are grievous because they won't preach the truth, because they will not tell the truth, because they're committing adultery and they are not telling people to repent. And adultery is not just a sexual sin, but adultery could be whoring with idols and images of other gods. And how many churches out there will have a Christmas tree or will have Estar eggs hunt on Easter Sunday and on Christmas season? Don't worry about the sodomites. Don't worry about the homosexuals. Listen, they're sinners. The churches are following God in God's eyes. and said, I'm liking you too. Those wicked and sinners exceedingly in the eyes of the Lord, Genesis 13, 13. You know what the problem with us is as Christians? We ought to know better because we got the King James Bible, but we got modern Bibles out there all over the place. We have changed God's word so we can lighten our sin, so we can have a God to be approved of our sin, so God will love us as sinners that we are, that we don't have to repent. God says, you're just as bad as Sodom, and you're just as bad as Gomorrah. And yet, all have sinned and come to the glory of God. No, nope. that's not it. That's not, that's not the verse. It's all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And these people that lie, these people that commit adultery, these people that, that are promoting evil doers, these people who, are, you know, don't repent. They're sinners still. And they need to get right with God. They need to confess their sins with God. Whether it be saved or come out in the backslide. Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16. 48 and 49. Ezekiel 16, 48 49. Ready? As I live, saith the Lord God. Oh, God making an oath. God is saying, I swear by myself. Sodom thy sister has not done she nor her daughters as thou has done thou and thy daughters. He's talking to Israel. He says Sodom and Gomorrah your sisters. And the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners uh, grievous before the eyes of the Lord. Genesis 13, 13 and yet God says in Ezekiel he said you have done worse. Has not done. Behold, this is the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Ready? They were sodomites and fornicators and adulterers and sexual perversion. No. No. Look. Behold, this was the iniquity of the sisters of Sodom. And the men of Sodom were, were wickedly and sinners. They were grievous before the eyes of the Lord. Genesis 13. Here it is. Pride. I'm going to be American. Made in America. Nation number one. Oh, majesty. Thy rocks I love. Oh, America. God bless thee. We're the greatest. We're the wonderful. Number one. Look how great we are. That's pride. That's a pride to be American, and that's pride to be in America. I am so glad of my country. God says that's a sin. And that's the sin of Sodom. There it is. There are Christians out there to be proud to be Americans, proud to be red, white, and blue, and, and my guns and all that, and that's a sin. And you need to repent with it. You're going to hate me. You're going to dislike me. You're going to unfriend me. You're going to turn off this video. But it's a sin. Just as harsh as sodomy, homosexuality, and now I really turned you off. Our place, our home is not America, it's New Jerusalem. We are pilgrims. We are only through this land to witness to the lost people, get them to Jesus, and to take Christians and grow them. Not to be liars to them. Right. Fullness of bread. 
Have you ever been in five, six, seven grocery stores? You ever been to these warehouse stores? America is full of bread. That's a sin. And yet we got more people living on the streets. We got veterans who fought in the war, veterans who serve in our U.S. military, and they are living on the streets and not being taken care of as they should. That's a sin, America. When you got a woman who, who will make children to get a check from the government by every first of the month and, and get that, and you got a man who served in the Army, the Marines, the, the United States Coast Guard, or the Air Force, or the Marines, or the Navy, and they don't get anything but living on the street. That's a sin. That's a sin. God says this is a sin, Assad. Yeah, there were homosexuals. There were lesbians. But there were also pride. And fullness of bread. And abundance of idleness. Concerts. Basketball. Baseball. Soccer, movie theaters, pinball, arcade, the beach, entertainment centers, CDs, telephones, video games. I can't even name all the stuff of idleness America has, and yet that's the same thing Sodom had. We have got all time for everything today, and yet we're Bible dumped. And I'm talking about Christians. Christians are so foolish to think, if I use the world, they'll get saved by Jesus Christ. If I let my light shine, and your light bulb's been out and removed for long a time, was in her and her daughters. Neither did she strengthen her hand of the poor and needy. We're going to that. We've got homeless people on the street now. There are homeless people on the street. Let me say. They are there because they cannot do anything else. The economy is terrible to them. And they may have a job. They can't afford to live on the money they're getting. There are people who don't deserve to be homeless. And are homeless. Because of the strength of this country. And how great we are. Jesus said, you'll have the poor always with you. But when the government makes you poor and sets a standard that you can't arise above it, your nation has sinned. And many of you really hate me now. But this is the scripture. This is the sin of Sodom, and I haven't seen sodomy. And I have showed you in the Bible, we've seen the first place for sodomite. We have seen men to break down a house to have sexual relations with other men. We have seen it. Well, in Ezekiel 16, when God is naming the sins from Genesis 13 and Genesis 14, it's not the sins you want God to name. It is the very same sins your country is doing, and you will not go against your country. You will love your country or leave it. I'm going to leave this country. Whether by death or rapture, definitely by rapture. If the Lord tarries and I die, my body will definitely go out of this country. When I die, I'll definitely go out of this country and I'll go to a place called New Jerusalem. Where there will be none of these sins. We're not done yet. And they were haughty. And committed abomination before me. There's that word abomination. And we've already seen. Yes, sodomy is abomination. So is pride. So is fullness of bread. So is idleness. So is not helping the poor and needy. So is being hostile. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. And no liberal loves that statement. God took Germany away because he saw good. Because Germany sinned against Israel, and I will curse them that will curse you. And their cup filled up, and they became sinners and exceedingly wicked and 
I destroyed him. Yes, sodomy, homosexuality is a sin, but so are these sins. And Ezekiel 16, and these are the sins of their city called Sodom. And you talk about Los Angeles, and you talk about San Francisco. Yeah, there's sodomy there. There's homosexuality. There's lesbians there. So is what we just read in verses 49 and 50. You know, there it is. Matthew ten fourteen. Matthew ten fourteen. Whosoever shall look upon who shall yeah, whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of that feet. Very I say to you, it shall be more tolerable. For the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Oh, the wicked of Sodom! There are cities in America today, there are cities in England today, that the law forbids a man with a Bible to preach the gospel. And in England, you can be actually arrested again for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not yet so in America. They can jail you, but there's enough laws to protect you. But they may go out the window one day. But for a, a city or town to say, we don't want your God, we don't want your Bible, we don't want you to shut up and go somewhere else and preach that God forbid gospel that we hate. God says it would be more tolerable than that wicked city exceedingly, in the eyes of God, uh, Genesis 13, 13, that would be for you to say, we don't want Jesus, we don't want God, we don't want the Bible. God, our nation says in the schools, no God, no Bible, no Jesus. And America's committing the sins of Sodom. And you're just as worse as Sodom is and I really turn people off now. Because I have preached against the Baptist God. America, America, God shed his light on thee. No more. You told him to leave. You can't even say in the courthouse, I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me blank. And they only have a Bible in the courthouse. You're telling me. One nation under God, which Catholic, Protestant, LBG, whatever those letters are, Presbyterian, what God? They're all in America. You really hate me now. Second Peter two six. Second Peter two six. And turn the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an sample. Unto those that should live ungodly. America, learn about Sodom and Gomorrah, because it may happen to you. England, learn about Sodom and Gomorrah. Germany, Russia, India, China, Japan, Indonesia, Mexico. What I did to Sodom and Gomorrah, I named their sins for you. I told you about it, and you are committing those sins. You will get the same example that those cities got. If not, I would have to apologize to those cities. And God is not going to apologize to those cities. Now you may not get brimstone and hailstone and fire coming down from, from heaven. But all those that are lost will appear before the great white throne judgment. And they'll go off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Their name is not in the land's book of life. The Christians will end up in the judgment seat of Christ and their works will be burned. And there's no gold, silver, precious stones. There's no rewards. There's no inheritance. And there's no crown. Now we have not looked at that main sin of sodomy. It's a sin. So is idleness. So is pride. 
so is adultery, so is fornication, so is lying, so is not honoring your parents, so so are all sins. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world and not naming sin. Plain and simple. Jude 7. Jude 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, so it was just more than Sodom and Gomorrah, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, ooh, that's a sexual sin, and going after strange flesh. There's, there's your men and men and women with women. When you get two male sexual organs together, that's strange flesh. When you got two sexual female organs going together, that's strange flesh. If it's not a husband and wife, male and female, it's strange flesh. And that can also include bestiality. That would be strange flesh to a human. And that happens. Are set forth as an example, we read that somewhere, suffering the vengeance of the eternal fire, hell. Countries that follow Sodom and Gomorrah with pride, wickedness, sodomy, fornication, lying, stealing, not giving honor to their parents, taking the name of the Lord in vain, not giving God the credit, rejecting God, rejecting the creation, just having everything against the word of God are going to end up like Sodom and Gomorrah with the sin of Sodom. It's not all about that one big sexual sin of the Baptist church. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. A sodomite needs to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as much as a drug pusher. As much as somebody who, who hates his parents and don't have anything to do with his parents and has ostracized his parents needs to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and get back to his parents as much as he can. The, the drug pusher to get away from the drug. The liar to get right and tell the truth and forsake his life. The thief to not steal no more. To get right with God. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And the sodomite to, to get out of that sodomy. To get into the right sexual relations. To find a, a person the opposite sex. Court them, marry them, and have a strange, no more strange relationship that they can be before God righteous. And no one sin. Luke 17, 28. Luke 17, 28. Remember what I said? I've had a couple people go, oh, what about what about lying? What about stealing? What about honoring that mother and father? I can relate. I, I cannot relate with them about homosexuality and lesbian and stuff. I cannot relate to that. I don't know nothing about that. I can't speak about. What do you think about being gay? What do you think about homosexual? What do you think about me being? I don't know. Never done it. Sorry. I've lied. We do. We talk about lying. I've taken things that weren't mine. Can we talk about that? Man, I've given my mom a hard time. Can we talk about that? And those things are under the blood. Only difference between, I mean, if you're dealing with a lost man, the only thing difference between you and me is my sins are under the blood. You can get yours under the blood, and you can get God to forgive you. You can get your sins clean. You can get your, land, your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and God can clean your life. You wouldn't hear that from some churches and Christians today. Luke 17, 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, or they ate, they drank, ooh, they bought, and they sold, and they planted, and they built it. Now, there's nothing I know that my preacher showed me, verse 27, in the days of Noah, they married wives. That's missing from Lot's family of his city. And so, God, in Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot, it doesn't mention marrying. But the same day that Lot went out and saw him, it rained fire and brimstone upon he from heaven and destroyed them all. But you remember what Ezekiel said? Pride, idleness, fullness of bread, the poor and needy weren't being taken care of. And with 
sodomy, sexual sins, beach reality, and liars, and people who didn't honor their parents, people who did not give God the time, people who trust God's name, people who outright rejected the word of God. Mark 10, Mark 10, 6 and 9. Mark 10, 6 and 9. We'll just run the scriptures here now to get about 10 minutes. So it turns, turns off. I don't know how far we're going to get. Mark 10, 6 and 9. I'm going pretty much right now. Everything. This is just extra scriptures. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. They twain shall be one flesh. Then they, so God's prescribed correct sexual relations is a husband and wife, a male and a female who has ventured out on their own to be one. There is no room for male and male or female and female or man and dog or woman and cat. There's no room for that. Absolutely not. Romans 1. Romans 1, 26. But for this cause God gave them up unto vile affliction. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. Women with women, women with animals. Or even women with women, themselves. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burn in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was me. It's a sin. Homosexuality. Bestiality. It is a sin. God has turned them over. But they're not dead. They're not in hell. They still can get right with God. They still can repent and turn. And yet we got false prophets today. Oh God just loves you as you are. God will receive you as you are. And they're just as worse as Sodom and Gomorrah. We are reading. 1 Corinthians 6 9. 1 Corinthians 6 9. Know ye not that the ungodly shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, you know, weak, weak of their sex nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rebellious, nor extortioners, extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. You see those wicked sins that we just named? Christians have done them. And God has washed them from them sins. He has cleansed you. He can take a sodomite, a lesbian, or a, uh, a homosexual, and he can cleanse them. He can wash them by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by them repenting and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Plain and simple. Chapter 7, verse 2. Nevertheless, avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. It's a male and a female and nothing else. And this is what you want to hear. It's a sin to have a man and a man and a woman and a woman. That's a sin. Yes, it is. 1 Timothy 1.10 1 Timothy 1.10 For whoremongers, for them that defy themselves with mankind, men stewards for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Wait a minute, I didn't do verse 9. 
Know that this this that the law is not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly, for the sinners, for unholy, for profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. You see what I said? When we go back to lying, look at me lying. Look how much that's come up. How about stealing? Look at what that's come up. And then dishonored parents. Listen, when you sit in that room after dad's giving you a bell, oh, I wish God would kill him. I hate this. Oh, I wish God would take him away. You killed your parents. You murdered them. Remember, just by your thoughts. You don't have to do the deed. Your thoughts make you a sinner. Your thoughts make you guilty before God. I've never done sodomy, homosexuality, lesbian. I don't know how to relate to that. But I can deal with them as a sinner because I am a sinner. I can find plenty of verses in the Bible about lying, stealing, and your parents than I can find about homosexuality. And I can come to the one conclusion. The Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Okay, what you're doing, yes, it's a sin. It's an abomination to God. You need to repent and get right. But can I show you some other places where you violated God? Where you're not right with God? Can I show you some other places? You might get somewhere. You might find out that they do see that some of us do care about their souls. 